So hopefully I won't take up your whole meeting. <laughs> so um, yeah, so let's just go there. So as I said, I'm Robin, resident of 34 years, and Alan. Alan and his partner, or his wife, just checking, um, and were instrumental in leading the campaign. Um, and you've probably seen them in the news quite a bit. So. Um, just outside my house, Plain Road. Yeah. So, we, as I said, we had the song, and there's also a video that, or a documentary being done on it as well by Elle Marsh from the BCA University, uh, from yeah, BCA and as a university student. So, if we've got time, I'll play that. It only goes for 12 minutes. So, yeah. So, I probably don't need to tell you about the lemon scented gum. You're probably all familiar with it. But um, it's a large, smooth bark tree which gives off a lemon aroma. And uh, home to we knew one retail possum um, and the regular meeting point for hundreds of native bats and birds, sort of in that area. So, um, yeah, more on that. So, why did we have the campaign? Um, the lemon city gum on Flemington Road was to be demolished in 2016. Uh, there was a $1.3 billion city link Tullamarine widening project. So the tree uh, located on the corner of Church Street, Flemington Road and at the entrance of Mount Alexander Road. And just on my first slide I had a picture of the actual um, uh, view of where it was. Excuse me, Robin, could you put that back on again? Uh, sure. The map? Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's the underpass going down to the um, cheap stick. And that's sort of heading into the city. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and this is where, this is where we live. Where are you, Well, Just the red top. The red top, that's you. Yeah. yeah. So, we also, and I'll show you, we camped. Alan and Anne also had a rental property next door. Yeah. Next door. So, that became our headquarters day and night. <laughs> <laughs> so, they did quite a bit, really. And this is part of a slide, uh, this slide shall I've added to because uh, Anthony Payton, who was one of the residents, put up six options to Big Rose to actually save the tree. But of course, as we know, consultation doesn't mean you're going to listen. And uh, even though it answered all their um, issues, um, it was never going to happen. So, yeah, so it was the first in line of five trees and it was saved when they, and I don't know if any of you were involved in that, but um, in the 60s when they did actually put the freeway, it was saved then, so why not um, again? So beautiful specimen, gorgeous tree, and uh, it's got a really good reference of Gregory Moore, apparently I found this in our documentation who was chair of the National Trust's Register of Significant Trees. And he believes it was at least 120 years old when it was cut down. Um, but he described it as the tree is a fine shaded specimen and for the species it has very good form. Not all lemon scented gums are so well structured in their canopy and branching structure that it has grown so well in such a difficult position over such a long period of test to its resilience and capacity to cope with urban stresses. So, you know, it was pretty fabulous tree. Uh, there's a picture of it in 1914, but it's, I think that's a pine in front of it, that's how I read it, but this is the tree. So it's quite significant in its growth in 1914, which is why it's believed that it's actually older than the, the 94 years that uh, it was understood to be. And that was it in 1969. Uh, so that's us meeting at the tree when it's in full bloom there. Um, at one of our, I think that's the 7 a.m. meeting, one of our first meetings where we had to start action because I've got a little summary in my pocket here. This all started about um, April in, 19, in 2016. We got flyers in March, or a flyer was produced in March that we didn't see in the sea till April that seemed to come by just by our neighbours passing this flyer that this tree was going to be removed. 
So um, that's when everything sort of started to happen. It was actually going to be removed very quickly. So um, I had a quick little summary of it. But um, so they said they were going to remove the tree on the 25th of June, and that was the 16th of June. But before then, we had these meetings where we sort of gathered and decided that we had to get into action. So, um, but on June 25th, they, the razor gang went in and cut down uh, quite a bit of the tree there. So uh, it was stopped by Alan, famous Alan, and Anne, <laughs> who chained themselves to the actual barriers. I don't know whether you saw that on the news, but. And it was. Um actually stopped by some very helpful police. There was a senior constable who was a very nice chap. They had a lot of police in attendance. But they were chopping and we were chained to the tree below them and they were dropping branches down around us, <laughs> quite large. And um, the police said, stop, enough, this is dangerous. And so they stopped the first chop. Yeah. And um, at that stage, uh, Anne was chained to the tree itself with a heavy chain from her cousin. Didn't they get someone from Geelong to do this? Some of the other artists didn't do it. I think that's true, yeah. actually. Pretty yes, true. yes. I think we actually did talk to them. That you're quite right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, were you there? Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Fantastic. You're <laughs> <laughs> um, So, we had a couple of team leaders. So we had Anne and Alan. And further on, I'll show you, we had Sue and Max. Because they all live very close by, they, um, you know, they are our sort of main inspiration for actually the campaign. And we were guardians for um, 24 hours a day, yes, mm -hmm. including all night. Mm -hmm. yes. and we had a roster, and some terrific people uh, kicked in and helped. And it was quite interesting to see the, the community spirit uh, so keen. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we had several night shifts, and myself. And people would drop in and say hello, how things are going. I think some of them were actually homeless. It was nice to drop in and cut <laughs> a few words. It was really touching. Yeah, a lot of people dropped food off. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it was quite something. I actually got to know a lot of my neighbours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. And that's um, 2nd of July um, we met. I think that was sort of a later photo of the one earlier. Um, and I think Julianne Bell was at this one and suggested that we actually form um, you know, an official uh, group. So from there we decided that we were going to... Oh, oh, Bridget and her husband is a photographer. 
Quite a bit I've forgotten them. But we had like 164 on our list and I had a mobile phone text list. So when we heard them, when they arrived, which is further on at 1.30 in the morning to do the next haircut, um, here it is, 5th of July, they snuck in with their chainsaws at 1.30 in the morning. So, you know, I got a phone call from Christine, I think, and I just pressed the button so everyone then turned up to stop them. And I think um, That's all. Yeah. Yeah, you guys changed yourself. We were chained, yeah. Chained again. <laughs> the police said, um, we'll have to cut your chain. And Anne said, um, well, if you must, please cut it near the end because it's not mine. <laughs> it belongs to my cousin. <laughs> and uh, they said, well, if you don't get away from the tree, you'll be arrested. And Anne was duly arrested. And taken away by probably about 10 police, escorted away because she's so dangerous. <laughs> and uh, she didn't have to ring work. She said, oh, sorry, I'll be late in for work today. I've been arrested. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything we can no, do. No, said, not today. again. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't sure whether she was going to be charged or not. No. She wasn't, uh -huh. but she was uh, escorted away. Yeah. And okay. the chain was recovered. And you weren't really activists up until that point either, were you? Oh, passive. Passive, all right. For what it was worth, yeah, yeah. yeah best. So there were eight trucks there um, blocking off the side of police and they took another 25% of the tree. So it was looking pretty sad at that stage. Around about, right about 30 police mm -hmm. turned up. Wow, wow. And that's um, one of Max and Sue's uh, properties there where they've got um, signs and uh, protect our trees, stop the chop. Again, and that's, um, and I put that there because Robert is up the tree, who was a ninja Robert Carcourt. He was from um, the Ninja Army from Plymouth yeah, Kensington. Fantastic yeah. support, brought down a generator for the lights and um, ladders. And sadly, he passed away oh. last year. That, um, here someone posted. So, and also, I just looked up Julianne Bell because at the very beginning, Julianne was um, participating with us. She didn't start it, but she was participating. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah. One politician who did turn up was Adam Bant. Oh, yeah. He had a, a long chat to us. So he gained um, brownie points then, or green points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And initially, Alan Sandal didn't realise the tree was actually in her. Um, constituency sort of area of responsibility. So she was involved and since then Rowan Leopard has been terrific with us. He's, um, even if he does it undercover, <laughs> he, uh, <laughs> he's, um, he's been terrific and he's been the one that's been um, controlling um, or protecting the wood or, you know, knowing where the wood was for us to actually um, continue on with more. I'm talking too much about no, no. Right. But that was the death of the tree, so they got it on the, the 26th of July. But before that, and I think, did you tell this story? Um, someone was doing the night shift and some lights came and parked on the middle of the road. And um, I think it was Sue, I think she tells it in the video. And two policemen got out and went, Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday, you know. <laughs> so really alerting well, us to the fact that it was going to happen. So so we had a lot of support there. But, um, so we had the senior constable who was very, very nice to everybody and stopped the first chop. He said, uh, I don't necessarily agree with chopping it down, but I'm just following orders. Yeah, that's right. And we understood that, didn't we? Same with the contractors. So apparently it was about safety that they had to cut down the tree, but you know, all as I say, and we've got the options there that Anthony Paint put together, a huge personal expense, because he also did the East West Tunnel design, you know, as alternatives. So, you know, you must get very disillusioned. Um, he, um, and it was traffic flows as well. Yeah. And, um, um, this is the photo with the trees removed and the extra lane they created, paved, uh, is hardly used. You see the occasional pedestrian, the tram is here, yeah. the occasional pedestrian or cyclist, 
but they've taken all those trees for the, the occasional pedestrian or cyclist. Yeah. Sure. Pass it around. So really, so when it was cut down, we had a little grave site. Um, <laughs> There's you. Where are you? Where are you? Oh yeah, oh, you are. Oh, sure. yeah. What's your name? Jenny. Jenny. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't name any of us except Ellen and yeah, yeah. and Max because I thought oh, there was so well. many. <laughs> yeah. So that was the night after, and you know, a lot of people came down to sort of pay their respects for it. It's sort of away. Yeah, away. Uh, lots of publicity. That's what it looked like after the tree was removed. And um, they left one down near the railway line. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, Sort of a token, almost. Yeah. But it's not as nice a tree, is it? Yeah, it just uh, doesn't do the thing. Something's got to hide that ugly you know, exit to the city. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. So we collected seeds. Um, there is that Kathy that collected the seeds? Yes, Kathy. Yeah, I've got it here. Kathy collected the seeds, and so some lovely person was that you made the crosses, or Max? Max made the crosses. So we. Um, Put that down there with the picture, and there's some pictures with lovely Anna Flanagan, and that's Anne in the red jumper, and um, myself and Christine West. But Anne, Anna Flanagan was fabulous. She yeah. just, you know, took so many photos of the birds, and look, I've got so many photos, but I can't put them all here for you. <laughs> um, and then I don't know where that came from, but I thought, yeah, the legacy. Let's find a solution for all. It's ironic that. Um Anne was arrested for not allowing the tree to be chopped. And just this week we've had news from the UK about the sycamore tree. Oh, oh, yeah. He was arrested for chopping it. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 You good, Alan. I'm 300 years old. old. That's right. Yeah. That was just terrible. So they were just pictures of all the guardians sort of who guarded the tree. But then there was part two. So this is the happy story. <laughs> so the relatives and offspring. So there's Anne, and this is a tree that uh, Alan and Anne went and purchased. And because their property is adjoining where the tree was, they decided they'd get a tree, we'd all plant it, and then by the time they left that house, it'd be so big, it'd cover yeah. two of the lanes, and then the person living in that house would have to get a permit to cut it down. So, <laughs> so we all gathered. <laughs> We all gathered, and there's Rowan and Alan um, came. We all had um, morning tea, or yeah. So we all gathered, and that's Kathy, who's um, actually Kathy on the right, who's actually um, promulgated the, the offspring. So there she starts promulgating them, and then they're a bit bigger, seedlings, and then they grew bigger and bigger, and now they're quite big. <laughs> and then uh, Rowan. Undercover, I think, uh, came up with a sketch for all the pieces of wood, and um, that's what we've now laid up at the side house. Um, so they delivered the wood uh, just in that corner, little outside. I don't know, the ranger's house is the side. We used to the ranger's house, yeah. What is it now? Oh, someone's pretty nice. Oh, yeah, one of the caretakers. Yeah. Beautiful. So, that was all assembled, hole was dug, and that's with Dillon and Melbourne City Council. Uh, planted uh, November on a freezing cold windy night, last November. Um, and then we put the second one just further down near that little park sign. And just this first one must have snapped in a storm after we planted it, it was looking very healthy and snapped. And then somehow Kathy noticed it's been Chris planted, something else planted there, not a lemon scent of gum. Oh, so yeah. we've still got saplings to replace yeah. it. So she was going to follow that oh, up this week. Yeah. yeah. So there, yeah, I said, where is our sapling? <laughs> yeah, thank goodness we have a stair. Yeah. yeah. You could have moved the other one, I guess, from down here. Well, we wanted the two. Yeah. So, Why yeah, not? yeah. And uh, so it's rest in peace, our beautiful lemon scent. So, and just as I say, Anthony did the alternative design, which I've got there as a PowerPoint. But um, 
Are you happy for me to just play the little video? Yeah. Can yeah. I just ask, yep. how, how, did you, how did you manage to save the log, given the venue, since the, the contract was cutting the tree down? Yeah, look, there was, because um, we had in between all that a lot of meetings and a lot of communication with Sue and Anthony and lots of people talking, and Vic Rose and the contractor paying lip service, apparently, there was, um, you know, a rumour going around that um, we were, or the Novelty Council was getting $200,000 to um, put something together with the wood. But I think that rumour was untrue. Um, I think they did get the 200000 but for what reason, I'm not sure. So I think it was just part of the deal that they would keep the wood so we could create a memorial. And um, it got stalled out at Essendon Field for a bit. Uh, because um, big roads, not to out there. So really, I think the um, the impetus for us to actually get that memorial completed was the wood was going to be going to disappear. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So so it happened, and um, you know it's hard to keep up the momentum of the site <laughs> several years later when you're so gutted by the experience. And I can understand why people feel burnt and then don't go to the next spot. Mm -hmm. you know, it was, it was gut-wrenching and it just took up our lives. Frustrating. I mean, I left work to go and save the tree. My boss was very understanding. I'd do the 4 a.m. shift at 6 a.m. And, you know, I'd just go to sleep till about 3.50 and get up and walk down to my stove here. And, and you know, we just did those two hours of dip. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I just play you this little movie, documentary. Um, the flying fox came in and was doing a lap. Oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 With the the seeds that Kathy yeah. Yeah. Mm. so she collected them from the ground when the tree had been cut down, and then just randomly tried to see which one would grow. Look, I think she. Yeah. Uh, I think she. We we had lots of advice from agricultural sciences, um, like the cloud, um, Jane Shug got involved in the Royal Botanic Garden as the arborist, he sort of um, consulted as well with it, and he, he climbed up the tree at one stage and had hung a banner. Um, the, well, I think a lot of people were consulted um, and gave us advice. Um, just thinking, Kathy had a lot, as you saw in those initial slides, and we have a lot of fossils right there, I have so the possum they like if they had them, but whatever. And if three survived, if they mm -hmm. had three. So uh, yeah. But actually an Alexa Cloud still has some of the seeds, you told me the other day. Who okay. has? Alexa Cloud. So she's a friend of mine who attended the tree as a guardian, but she's also an agricultural scientist. So she probably every day she still has a lot of them. So so we can keep promulgating if you want. <laughs> so yeah, so really. Um, well, perhaps it'd be worthwhile doing something with the seed because it might go out of date. You know, Does it? Okay. Don't know, but um, it might. Yeah. Yeah. Because past the, um, and I don't know what's happening in the master plan with you, but the 1997 World Park master plan made right. a thing about planting what they call signature trees with the main emphasis and the signature tree of choice then was lemon and gum. And right. so and I think that followed on from the hey, the roundabout at the top of the university, you know the one surrounded yeah. by yeah. what's really the difference. And so that sort of set the precedent for the area for signature trees. Um, okay. So it may be that if they're going to repeat that having signature trees as entrances 
we could use the the seeds and stuff. I think we know it grows. Yeah, and we know um, it grows well. And I think that might have had something to do with it because you probably know too the positioning of those trees that got planted just that length. I think that had something to do with it. Like we were limited in where that could go. Ooh. Yeah. Part of you just reminded me when the campaign was happening, um, there were many things discovered in big roads and queues and, and um, signs got put up around those trees as well about stop, stop and fill in guns. <laughs> so it was quite an extraordinary experience. So, yeah, but, um, so the, the big roads, were they the ones that made shopping channels? Would they have control of semi the road or was it yeah. the urban and the yeah. big driving crew? Melbourne City Council, even though we had their support initially because there was a submission made and all the councillors actually um, voted in favour, but then um, it was actually um, taken out of their hands because of the, the legal side of it. And since then, um, Sue has actually, Sue did a whole lot of research on um, the legal side of it to try and understand why Melbourne City Council had no control. So, and there was a particular part of the Act that, um, yeah, so I did look it all up the other night, but I didn't, I didn't um, contain that. You probably just said the Fleming Road was an arterial road and therefore yeah. was naturally under the control of state government. Yeah. Whereas Melbourne City Council only controlled the road. That's right. And there was a part of the Act with the city um, being quite big that, um, Allowed. But it was about over five million dollars that it would cost to redesign and go around the tree. So um, I've got a lot of documentation on it. I've saved it all in a folder. So if anyone does have any more questions, I've got lots of documents and lots of emails. And um, I've got the submission by Melbourne City Council. Um, we had the petition by the National Trust that had 2,200 signatures, I think it was. So, yeah, a lot of activity. But the, um, the roundabout of College Crescent, the big trees there, yeah. it's been rumored that they're listed for the chop, but it hasn't really? happened. It hasn't happened, so maybe we've done some good. Well, oh, they couldn't shut it down there. <gasps> that, that is really terrible. Couldn't they? They've already yeah. narrowed the roundabout because they, that was very, you know, some states the roundabout got made smaller. Yeah. Why did they want to chop it down? Well, why don't they chop it down? See, there are all the options that Anthony um, Payton came up with, mm. which, you know, just. Yeah. Option six. Yeah, option six. Yeah, I mean a lot of work went into it, and um, but it went nowhere. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, I've gone over yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it. Thank you was. very much for bringing that oh, same story oh, off. Oh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but, it, but it sort of echoes um, in the park. So much. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's sort of death by a thousand cuts oh. watching that tree go down. My my kids used to say I care more about trees than them. <laughs> 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 People stopped at Helen Lewis, I think, from 